Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. So let me continue with my favorite subject, construction problems in geometry, uh, especially those related to circles, tangents, angles, whatever. Um, they are very, very useful, and I uh, very much hope that uh, you have already solved all these problems yourself before listening to this lecture. Uh, if you didn't, just stop listening to me and, and try to solve all of them yourself. They are easy, and it's just the process of solving these problems really what's needed, um, much more than just listening to my solutions to this. Because the purpose is for you to develop your creativity, your ability to put different ends together and come up with a solution, uh, not to listen to whatever the radio solution I provide. Well, at the same time, if you have already solved, then by all means, please listen to whatever I'm saying and uh, just compare. I mean, there are different solutions uh, to, to the same problems without any pro without any questions asked. Now, uh, so let me just continue. This is construction number four lecture, and uh, it has ten problems, as usually. It's my standard. All right, let's start. Construct a circle that contains a given point and is tangent to a given straight line at a given point. Okay, so you have line and a point and another point. And you have to have uh, a circle which is tangent to the line at that particular point and also going through this line, uh, through this point. So you have the line and the point A on it, and you have the point B. You have to build this circle, which is tangential at point A to a line, and going through B. Okay, this is one of the examples uh, of using the locus, uh, two locuses actually, to locate one particular point. Because one quality which this particular point, the center of, uh, of a circle which we're looking for, possesses is that if you draw a perpendicular, if you, if you connect it to the point A, it will be perpendicular to the line. Uh, the, the radius to the point of tangency is perpendicular to the tangent itself, which means that this center is supposed to lie on the perpendicular to a given line uh, in, in a given point. So this perpendicular is something which we have to build first as the locus uh, of all points uh, from which uh, which we can use as a center of a uh, tangential circle. At the same time, this same center is supposed to have another property. It's equidistant from A and B, because these are both radiuses, right? Which means, where is the locus of points equidistant from two given points? Well, it's a perpendicular bisector between them. So this is the sector, uh, this is the segment, and uh, this particular line is a perpendicular bisector of this segment, AB. So, one locus and another locus. So this point is supposed to belong to both of them, so that's why it's on their intersection. So obviously, now when we have finished analysis of this problem, the construction itself is simple. Number one, we draw a perpendicular to our given line to the given point. Number two, we have this segment AB, because B is also a given point, and do the perpendicular bisecting. Now, the intersection of these two locuses is the center of a circle which we are looking for. And the distance from A and from B is the radius. Knowing the center and the radius, we know the circle. Next, number two. Construct a circle tangential to both legs of a given angle if one point of tangency on one of the legs is given. So, you have to draw a circle which is tangential to a given circle, to a given angle, to both legs. 
if one of the points of tangency is given. So you have an angle, and you have this point. All right. Now, let's think about it. This point, the center, is equidistant from two different uh, legs of an angle. Now, why? Well, for obvious reason, because it's tangent to this, so the, the radius to the point of tangency is perpendicular. Um, so this is the radius, the distance from the point to, um, from a center to a, a leg. Now here, the same thing. Uh, from the radius to the tangent, it's perpendicular, so that's the distance. Now, so where is the locus of points equidistant from uh, two different legs of an angle? Well, obviously, it's angle bisector. Because any point here will be equidistant from both legs. Why? Because this is the hypotenuse. These are right angles. And since this is the bisector, of the angle, these two angles are congruent to each other. So triangles are congruent, and that's why these cajeti are congruent to each other. Okay, so this center is supposed to be on the bisector of this angle, which angle is given, so we can draw a bisector. That's one locus. Another is, let's think about it, this point is um, located uh, on well, th th this point is supposed to be located on the perpendicular to this leg at this point. We have this point as a given, and this is a perpendicular, which means that this is another line, the perpendicular to this leg at this point, where the center is supposed to lie. So we have two lines. The intersection of these two lines is uh, a circle, a center of, the, uh, of a circle we would like to construct. So we found the, cer uh, the center, and we have the radius actually. So we have the whole, the whole circle. All of them are easy, as you see. Given two straight lines parallel to each other and point between them. Parallel lines and point between them. Construct a circle tangential to both lines and containing a given point. So we have to build a circle which is tangent to both lines and going through this point. Again, analysis. This center, since it's the center uh, which is uh, on equidistant from these two parallel lines, and again, why is it equidistant? Because this is this radius to the point of tangency is perpendicular. This radius to the point of tangency is also perpendicular to tangent. Now, these are two parallel lines, which means this is basically a diameter. And no matter where this particular circle is located, this length is fixed. And the center is in the midpoint of this segment. So, what we can do is, we can say that this particular center is always in between these two lines on equal distance from it. So we have a mutual perpendicular to these parallel lines, divide it in half, and draw a perpendicular bisector to this segment. So this is the line which is also parallel to these two and lies right in the middle between them. Everywhere on this line, we can put a center and a circle will be tangent to both parallel lines. Now. Out of all these lines, we need only one. Uh, out of all these centers, we need the one whose circle actually going through this point. Now, how can we do that? Well, let's think about it. We basically know the radius right now, right? Since this is half of the distance between parallel lines. 
So we know this distance. So the center is supposed to be on this distance, which we have determined on this distance from the given point. Now, where are all the points which are in the given distance from a given point? Well, obviously, this is a circle around this point. So wherever this circle of this radius, which is half of this distance between the parallel lines, wherever this circle intersects our midline between these two parallel lines, which is this and this, two points, that's where the center of the circle which we are looking for is supposed to be located. So this is one of them. And this is another solution when it actually uh, going through this line, but on another side of a circle. So two solutions exist in this particular case. Uh, analysis actually gave us one locus and another locus. One is a straight line, another is a circle around the given point of a radius which we have already determined. Intersection between these locuses give us the solution. Okay. Construct a tangent to a given circle such that it forms a given angle with a given straight line. Okay. So you have a circle, given circle. Now we have to construct a tangent which has a given line, a given angle. This is an angle. Okay with a given line. So we have a circle, we have a line, and we have an angle. So we have to draw such a tangent which makes this particular angle equal to this one with the given line. And by the way, there are maybe more than one solution in this case, but let's talk about one particular solution. Okay. So we know that this particular angle is given, right? We also know, obviously, that this is perpendicular to the point of tangency. All right. Now, what can we say? Let's just choose any point on this line and using this angle draw a line at this particular angle. It will not be tangent, obviously. But, however, what we can say is that the real tangent which we are looking for and this line which has exactly the same angle, these are parallel, right? Because these are uh, equal uh, congruent angles. So these are parallel, These uh, and, and this is transversal. If these angles are the same, lines are parallel. Now, what does it mean that the lines are parallel? It means that the perpendicular to one of them is a perpendicular to another. So, since we have already built this line, we can always, from the center of the circle, draw a perpendicular to this constructed line. And wherever this perpendicular intersects the circle is our tangency point for the tangent which we are looking for. So, as soon as we got this point, we draw a perpendicular in this point to the radius, which exactly is the tangent which we are looking for. Well, now, why there are multiple solutions? Well, number one, this actually, this line, this radius, which is perpendicular to, uh, to this line, is intersecting circle in two points, which means this is another tangent, which also makes the same angle alpha with our given line, and it's also a tangent. On another side, we can have the line which makes an angle on another side. This would be alpha. And then we can draw a perpendicular to this, and it also crosses uh, our circle in two points, which means we can again put one line and another line 
both are ten tangents, and both are making angle alpha equal to this one with, uh, with the given line. So there are, it looks like there are four solutions at least. I don't think maybe there are more, but I, I, it looks like only four. All right, so that's it for this. Um, let me make one quick point. In all these situations, I usually draw a circle or a line or a tangent or whatever else as already kind of ready for me to, to, to analyze. So then I'm doing analysis and I'm saying, okay, this particular, let's say it's the center of a, a circle which we are looking for, is supposed to satisfy these properties. And then when I have found that through the analysis that there are certain properties that this particular center is supposed to satisfy, which means it's supposed to be on this locus and on that locus, then the real construction actually starts. Okay, I draw a locus, I draw another, and then the crossing of these two lines or crossing of the circle in the line or whatever else, I'm getting my answer. So the whole problem, solution, uh, the whole problem solving actually is done in like two phases, which uh, I'm bunched together actually uh, as one solution. First stage is analysis, and then second stage is real construction. Um, let me try maybe the next uh, problem to, uh, to differentiate actually these two stages in, in, in more clarity, I would say. Okay. Given a circle and the point outside it, construct a second from a point to a circle such that the chord uh, formed by it was a congruent to a given segment. Okay. Circle, point, second, and uh, we want this particular segment to be congruent to some given segment. So we have to draw a second from a given point to a given circle such as a chord which is being cut by a circle from a second is congruent to this particular segment A. All right, so how can we do this? Well, let's think about it. If we know the circle and we know uh, AB because this is our A, obviously, as you know, if you have a chord, most likely you will need to put the radius uh, perpendicular to the chord. And let's think about triangle KBO. What do you know about this triangle? Obviously, you know the radius, which is R, and you know KB, which is one half of A, where A is our segment. So you know the catheters and hypotenuse of this triangle. So you know the triangle. You can construct it by hypotenuse and a catheters. This is one half A, and this is R. This gives you this particular uh, segment, OK. The segment OK you built, basically. You construct by constructing this particular triangle, right? Now, is it sufficient? Uh, basically, yes, because what you have to do really after that, uh, all you need is draw a circle concentric with the given one of a radius b. And now you see that ma is tangent to this small circle, right? So this is analysis. I can find out the OK. I can then circle around O with the radius equal to b. And then I can uh, draw a a tangent to this smaller circle. All right, so this is analysis. Now, how the construction actually is doing? Okay, here is the construction. Now, we don't know this line. We have to draw it, right? All we have is a circle. Uh, 
a point and a segment. So, what do I do first? Well, first of all, using the radius, I know the radius of a circle since circle is given, and half of this segment, which is half of A, I built a right triangle. Now, we all know how to do it, right? For instance, you can build the right angle. You cut half of A here. Then you have, in, in the compass, the R. Using this as a center, you basically cut the R, and this is your B. OK, so you build this triangle, so you know this segment. You take the comp uh, you, using the compass, you take this segment, use it as a radius of a new circle here. All right? Now, what's next? Next, I said we have to draw a tangent from a point to a circle. Now, you do remember how to do it. It's one of the previous uh, tasks. You basically connect them together and uh, divide it by half and use this as a circle. So wherever it crosses, since this is uh, the right angle, right angle is inscribed into this bigger circle and supported by half a circle. That's why it's right. And that's why we use OM as a diameter. We found the center of this diameter and drew a new circle. And that's what makes the angle OKM the right angle. So wherever, wherever my this circle intersects this smaller circle, this is a point K. And MK actually gives you the second we are looking for. That's the construction. So first I did some kind of analysis. Then using the analysis, I construct the, uh, the second which we are looking for. Next, construct a circle of a given radius tangential to a given straight line and containing a given point. A circle of a given radius tangential to a given straight line. OK, so you have a straight line. Now let's consider that we have built it, this circle, of a given radius. And we also have a point. So we have a line, we have a radius, and we have a point. All right, so let's just think about where exactly this particular center of a circle which we're looking for uh, is located. On one hand, since this distance is known, this is the radius, it means this center which we are looking for is supposed to be on a line parallel to a given line and on a distance equal to the radius, right? So every point on this line can be a center of a circle of this radius which is tangential to the line. At the same time, this center is on a distance r from a given point which means it's supposed to be on a circle around that point of a radius, same radius r. So wherever this line, dotted line, and this dotted circle cross each other, that's where our center is supposed to be located. So this is an analysis. Now, the construction itself, all right, so this is the line, this is the point which is given, and this is the radius. So first, I construct the perpendicular, I cut the radius, uh, the perpendicular again, or parallel to this line, 
And then the same radius from here, I'm circling around my given point. So these are two centers which can, two, two points which can serve as centers. So from here, this distance is R, and this distance is R, which means that this is a tangential to the line and containing this point. Same thing with this. This distance is R, and this distance is R. So this is another circle, which is also tangential to the line and going to the point given. That's it. <clears throat> okay. Given a circle and a straight line outside it. A circle and a straight line outside it. Find a point on a line such that the tangent from it to a circle has a given length. So if you find this point, this is a tangent, it should have the given length. Well, obviously, you have to draw a radius to the point of the tangent, of the tangency, and what you know is this is the R and this is the A. Okay, let's just wait until my phone stops ringing. Uh, so, this is This is the right triangle, because this is a tangent. This is the radius to the point of tangency, so they are perpendicular. The AB, we know, that's the given, and the radius is given. So the triangle is given, which means OB is given, well, not given, but it, it's basically constructible as well. So you construct this triangle. Now I'm going to a construction uh, stage. You construct this triangle by two catheters, R and A, this is A. This is hypotenuse. Now, having the hypotenuse, you basically draw a circle around O using this hypotenuse as a radius, and wherever it crosses the line which is given, that's where the point from which we should really draw a tangent to a circle is located. And from this point, the tangent, this one, and this one, by the way, would have exactly the same length as well as this one and this one. <coughs> so we have two points and four different tangents, uh, which basically make, make up a, a solution to this problem. Construct a triangle by an angle, an altitude from the vertex of this angle. Construct a triangle by the angle, an altitude from this angle. And another altitude from another. What do we have here right now? So we know the angle, and we know two altitudes, BD and CE. We have to construct a triangle. By the way, um, uh, I don't know, this is probably just uh, my attempt to uh, make some kind of a uh, repetition of whatever we did before, because this is just triangles, there are no circles here. 
Uh, however, um, I found this problem and uh, it might actually have certain connection to circles. But anyway, let's just think about how to solve the problem. So we know that there is an EC and BD, two altitudes, and we know the angle. All right. So basically, if you will take a look at the triangle EBC, it's the right triangle. And we know two elements of this right triangle. We know the angle, acute angle B, and we know the catheters EC. So in theory, we can always build triangle uh, EBC knowing whatever we know, angle and this altitude. All right, so let's just start building. So for instance, we have built this particular triangle using this angle and the catheters, E, C. Now, what's next? Uh, now, now we have this altitude, uh, which means that, uh, what can we say? So we have to do this. Okay. We have the point C. We don't have point D. However, we have a distance between B and this line which means this line, if I will draw a circle, okay, here is the circle connection. Now I understand why, it's, why, this, why this is here. If you will draw a circle of the radius BD, center B, it will be tangential to AC, right? So, as far as our construction going on, so we can do is from the B, as from the center, we built a circle of the radius equal to our second altitude. And since CD is a tangent, now, and we already know how to do it, we built a tangent from C to this circle. And that would be our point D. And that would be our point A. So that's how we build it. First, we build this triangle by an angle and the catheters. Then a circle around the vertex of the radius equal to the second altitude. And then the tangent from this point C, which we have built in the very beginning as part of the ABC triangle, the tangent point G and continue to point A uh, intersecting the continuation of EB. So that's how we get ABC. I was wondering why we have triangles. Now I understand why I put it there. Not just a repetition. Okay. Uh, given two points, construct a straight line such that perpendiculars to this line from given uh, equal to two given segments. Okay. Let's say you have, uh, let, 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 let's say you're analyzing this, this problem. So you have to find a line with these two distances given. So you have this distance and you have this distance. So the distance from a point to a line is along the perpendicular. So these are two perpendiculars, they're parallel to each other, by the way. But in any case, uh, it's also very useful here to have uh, circles arranged. Because if I will have, <coughs> will have a circle from this as a center and this as a radius, it will be tangential to the line. Same as here. also tangential to the line. So, if we know these two radiuses, basically, these two circles, we can draw the circles, and what do we have to do now? We have to do a tangent which is common to these two uh, circles. So we have to 
be able to draw a tangent to two circles. Okay, let's consider this problem separately. Um, Now, let me forget about these circles and let's concentrate on this problem again. What if I would draw a line parallel to this line? Again, we're back to analysis. What we know right now is this is, if this is A and this is B, this is B minus A, right? So, what we know right now is that if I will draw a circle here of a radius b minus a, then my problem is much simpler. Now, I don't have to really draw a line tangential to two circles. I have to draw a line which is tangential to this smaller circle and originating in this point, at this point. Now, this is the problem which we have already solved many times. How to draw a tangent from a point to a circle. We know how to do this, right? You use this as a diameter. Draw a circle around it. And wherever it crosses, this is the right angle, which means this is a tangent. Okay, so we know how to draw a tangent from a point to a circle. So now we know how to approach this, pro th th this problem. First, you uh, uh, we don't have this line yet. Now we're construction in, in the construction stage. Okay. So first you calculate b minus a, the bigger minus smaller, and use this as a center. That's number one. Number two, so this is b minus a. Number two, you draw a tangent from this point to a circle. Okay? You know how to do that. What's now? Now we can draw a perpendicular to the point of tangency. Now this is B minus A. Then we cut A and we draw a parallel line here. So since these are both perpendicular to the same line, these are parallel, this is also A, and this distance is A, this distance is B minus A plus A, which is also, which is B, and, uh, and that's what actually is needed. So we draw a line which is on a certain distance A from the point A and B from the point B. And the way we do it is by uh, drawing a circle, uh, drawing a tangent, and shifting the tangent down by certain lengths. Okay? And the last problem in this lecture. Construct a circle tangent to a given circle at a given point and containing a given... So, there is a point on the circle. What we have to do is we have to draw another circle which is tangential to this circle and going through a point. Now, two circles are tangential to each other if they have only one common uh, point, and we know that 
the perpendicular to this point where they touch each other is basically a tangent which is tangent to both of them. We solved that problem before. All right, so what we do know is uh, we know <coughs> uh, constructive tangent, okay. So basically having this point, we know this line. Right? The center is supposed to be a continuation of the line which connects the center of a given circle and the point of tangency. At the same time, the center is equidistant from these two points. Both are given points, which means it's supposed to be in the perpendicular bisector of this uh, segment. All right, so basically we have done the analysis. The construction is, so given a point on a circle and another point. So what do we do? First, we draw this. Secondly, we do a perpendicular bisector to this. And this is the center. <coughs> and this is the radius. That's it. That was my last problem. Well, again, I hope it was educational. Don't forget that Unizor is the place where you can find these and many other very interesting problems. Solve problems yourself. That's very, very in in important before you listen to these lectures. And also parents and supervisors and uh, teachers who would like to control the educational process of their students are welcome at Unizor. Uh, it provides you the ability to enroll your students into particular program, programs, uh, check their score on exams which they should take, and basically mark the uh, particular uh, lectures or programs, whatever, as completed or not completed, depending on the results of the exam, and try to make sure that your students are really going through the maximum possible score on every exam. It's very important. All right, good luck, and uh, thanks for your attention. See you next time.